Well, howdy everybody. Here we have the Phytech Tri-Power System. It is pretty darn cool. So I'm gonna show you all about it here in these couple of videos. Probably do a three-part video. Um, gonna show you, obviously, the engine running with the system on it, and kinda go back and show you step-by-step -step what I did to install this on this Corvette here. So this is 427, and it is for this 69 Corvette right here. That is clearly still a long ways away, but we got this thing running and it is pretty darn cool. Uh, Phytech did a pretty awesome job. I will definitely say, if you're watching this video, if you're thinking about doing this um, for a Corvette, you, you know, it'd be beneficial to watch these three videos I'm gonna do, because uh, there's a lot of little things that you gotta do to modify it to make it work. This was not really a bolt-on setup, I mean, Technically it was a bolt-on setup, but a lot of little things you gotta modify, a lot of little quirky things. I think Phytech really kind of intended this just for the Mopar guys. All in all, I'd say Phytech did a pretty awesome job on this dry power setup. It's really pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you all the details in these next couple of videos on how to install this whole thing. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool and it really wasn't that difficult. I, I will say though, it took a couple of weeks but between trying to figure out what to do in different situations um, along the way, trying to figure out what fittings to use, um, just getting the whole thing set up. It was, it was definitely uh, not a weekend project. Uh, now, if you have a Mopar, yeah, you could probably do this in a weekend because it really will just bolt on, I think. Um, based on some of the other videos I've seen, but I haven't seen any videos of anybody doing this on a Corvette So I figured I would do this just for anybody that is interested You know, it is possible. It does fit on there. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass But it's pretty cool and it's worth it. I think it fired right up and uh, It sounds awesome. So, so I'm going to show you in the next uh, The next segment of this I'll show you what comes in the kit when you buy the throttle bodies and then everything else that you need to buy to make it work. So everything from the fuel lines uh, over to the EFI tank and all that kind of stuff. And uh, alrighty, so let's get to it. Okay, so let me show you real quick what comes in this kit. Okay, so the throttle bodies are pretty nice. Um, I feel like they did a good job uh, machining these things. They're pretty nice. One thing I do like is that you can change the fuel fittings from either side, which is nice for the uh, Corvette because the fuel fitting for the Corvette should be on the same side as the throttle linkage, at least on the tri-power setup anyway. So um, that's gonna be nice. So I've already got one of them flipped around here. So I wanted to make sure it actually worked. So they do flip around, that's cool. And you can see each one of them has different locations for the sensors. So the center throttle body has the idle air control sensor there, and it also has the throttle position sensor. And then the two end carburetors, that one has a block off plate, and this one here has the map sensor. So this map sensor is the problem. It's the big problem with installing this, because look at this big goofy son of a bitch, right? So not only does this sensor hang way down, okay, but they also installed it so that the base plate of this sensor comes down at an angle. So by the time you put the plug in, which sticks way out here, it's sitting right into the intake manifold. But anyway, I'm gonna resolve that. It's just gonna be a pain in the neck. Now this one has, you can see there, there's a, uh, the vacuum ports, and that one's for the brake booster there. Um, over here, this one's blocked off. So this one should go probably in the front, so that way you can get the vacuum lines on, because otherwise the other throttle body sits up so close against this that you can't get the vacuum lines on it. Here's some other stuff that comes in the kit. You get the oxygen sensor, some other plug, 
you get these base plate gaskets. They're actually pretty thick. They're pretty good quality. I'm impressed. Uh, the handheld tuner, you know, which most videos people complain about this and say it's a real pile of crap. It feels like quality. Um, I think most people just don't like the plug set up for it because it's got all these little, it's got all these little things or whatever. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. It looks decent though. You get a computer with it, some sort of a mount, obviously. Um, temperature sensor in that little box. A little fitting for the temperature sensor. Okay, this O2 bung, this is for people who can't weld. Okay, so you can just drill a hole, you can put that on the tube, and then you can clamp it down. Okay, but I plan on welding this on, and I don't know what material this is made out of, but it looks kind of weird. I hope it's not stainless steel because I can't weld stainless steel right now. Um, so I might have to get a, just a regular, regular bung. Also, I'm gonna have to grind that all down. I don't want to weld that huge, big square. I'll just grind it down to what's a circle, and weld it on that way. Okay, then you got your wiring harness. It's got all your connections. It, might look overwhelming in this bundle, but it's actually pretty simple. Okay. So that's about it for the parts. So let me show you what I've got as far as the fuel system parts and what I'm going to do uh, for the fuel pump and all that stuff. It comes in a huge big box. So it's the Holly Sniper EFI conversion fuel tank kit uh, for this Corvette. So yeah, this is the Holly Sniper set. So you get the fuel tank, it's got all the provisions for the sending unit and the in-tank pump, which is very nice. You get fuel tank straps, all the gaskets, um, filter screen, the plug for the pump. Uh, gives you a breather here. And of course the, uh, fl uh, what do you call it, the float sending unit and the pump, which is a uh, Walbro uh, made in USA. I'm sure the electric motor in this thing is made in China, but whatever. So yeah, that's, gonna, that's a pretty sweet little setup. Well, the other part here, the fuel pressure regulator. You can see there's the uh, part number if you're doing one of these. So the fuel pressure regulator is pretty cool. I was surprised. It's actually a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, so it's it's just a little little guy, but that's perfect. What I'm gonna do is mount this on the fuel pump block off plate on the side of the motor and uh, just run the lines right to there and then up. So it's gonna be, that'll be pretty cool. Uh, also comes with a little pressure gauge and then down inside those little holes there as uh, the fittings for this thing. So yeah, th and this thing also feels like pretty good quality. So I think that'll work out. All right. Okay, so the last few pieces I'm gonna need for this whole kit, uh, just some various fittings to kind of get everything hooked up. Um, rubber line, I decided not to use the original steel line because um, then I'd have to, there'd be like a million different fittings to kind of get it from the steel line then the NPT fittings to over to the the AN fittings to the rubber line and the rubber line, you know, back to the end, you know, there's so many little things and I know it'll leak. It'll freaking leak, I know it. So I'm just, I just said, screw that. I'm gonna take the steel line out. I'm gonna use the rubber line. Uh, this rubber line was Deco, uh, part number 80090. If you decide to use the inline filter from Flytech, that's the inline filter right there. Not filter, what the hell am I talking about? Inline pump. And so, just for comparison's sake, if you're wondering, um, you know, I think most people have replaced one of these at some point. So you can see clearly, you can see just how big the uh, inline pump is. Okay, so now let's take a look at the problems with putting these throttle bodies on these low profile intakes. And the first problem, and the biggest problem, is this front throttle body, the one that has the vacuum ports on it. So this is the one that has the map sensor here in the front. As you can see, 
Look at the gap that I have right there underneath the throttle body. That's because the map sensor is hitting the intake right there. So, see if I can get a better angle at it for you. You can see how it comes down. It just runs right into the manifold. So you can see it needs to go up quite a good bit higher. Okay, now it gets even worse when we put the plug in it. So let me show you that real quick. There it is with the plug in it. Look at that. Yeah, that, I mean, that. that's not even gonna begin to go on this intake. Look how big of a spacer I would need. That's like inch and a half and it's still hitting the intake. And not to mention, still gotta try and get the water filler neck in here too. And so this bolt uh, right here is going to hit the thermostat housing unless we get a, a more low pro or a, a bolt with a smaller head on it. Maybe you kind of grind that one down a little bit. I mean, assuming that I use a smaller intake spacer, which I'm gonna have to do because I'm gonna have to modify this sensor. Okay, now the other problem is over here. Okay, so these Corvette manifolds, they use two 500 CFM carburetors at the ends and a 350 CFM carburetor in the middle. But these throttle bodies are all 500s. So, that's the other problem, is you gotta have some sort of a spacer that's gonna go from a 350 up to a 500. Um, or you could modify your intake, which I'm definitely not gonna do since this was over a thousand dollar intake manifold. Uh, <clears throat> then the other problem is back here. You can see that vacuum port right there. Uh, well, you can't really use it with these throttle bodies. You gotta plug it off and use a different plug somewhere. So these intakes do have another port here on the side, which is supposed to be for this PCV, uh, PCV valve, but they also, you know, the throttle bodies, you do get this vacuum port here after your brake booster. So that's what I'm gonna have to do, basically just block it off. So problem number four is you have to space up the throttle bodies enough that, that you'll be able to work the throttle because these linkages just hit right on the intake. Same with the front one. Well. It's not hitting because it's sitting up in the air, but you can see how low it would be if it was sitting down. Look how close it is already. So, yeah, so I ordered three spacers and I'm just gonna have to get creative with them. Yeah, this will be fun. Okay, so my spacers just showed up. So I wanna show you the spacers here real quick. So you're gonna need three spacers, obviously, to put this on a, this tri-power setup on a Corvette. Um, I got these through Summit. You can get them through Jegs and eBay and everybody has them. Uh, the particular one that I'm using is uh, right here, Transdept 2136. Comes with the gaskets and the studs. And they're actually pretty nice. Some of the reviews on them were crappy, um, you know, but it, it is what it is. It's very, it's very simple. I, there's really no way to screw this up, right? In the reviews, some people said that the insides of these were cast material and they weren't machined. I mean, maybe that was, maybe they changed it since those reviews were made, but it's clearly a machined surface. Um, you can see that's, that's a cast surface there. Um, but they are a half inch thick. They look pretty good and they're going to work perfectly. Um, it gets these things, it gets these throttle bodies set up just where they need to be. And uh, I'll show you here on the car in a minute how they, how they fit right on. Uh, if you are curious, because they don't show these specs online, I don't know why. Uh, inch and three quarters is the inside diameter. Uh, so it fits a 500 CFM perfectly. And it's kind of, it was kind of odd. It, I, I even, I, I tried contacting people to find out what the, di what the diameter of this was and nobody knew. Everybody kept saying, oh, it fits 350 CFM through 650. And I'm thinking there's a huge difference there. And that's not the question I'm asking. I wanted to know the diameter. So there it is, inch and three quarter fits a 500. Because uh, what I was wanting to know was, you know, I was looking for one with a uh, 350 CFM hull, just one, and then I wanted two of them at 500. That way I could, 
I could bevel one of these out with a die grinder to make it go from a 350 to a 500. So my center uh, throttle body is gonna be, is gonna have a 500 CFM hole, even though the hole in the intake manifold is for a 350. Uh, just that center one is like that. So at some point I'll have to find another adapter, you know, and hopefully make it work. Uh, but for now, this will work out. Uh, at least it'll at least get this thing up and running and uh, get me get me down the road. So.